conference. And if they uh, were the best 0-2 team in the state before they played Fitchmer, if they certainly were the best 0-3 team in the state. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. They came in here and they brought it to 22 to 16 before they gave it up. Here's the kickoff and play by play, the best play by play guy in the east of the West Coast. He's Michael looking Hawk. all over here to Cook with a kickoff. Sakai kick. Taken by Jensen. Jensen brings it right, excuse me, taken by Kyle Smith. Brings it right up the middle to about the 34-yard line. Right up the bat, the has got good field position. They had a middle return on it. They managed to shield off Fitch coming down the field. He almost got up the middle and broke that. Well, we'll see what they do. The Bears have the ball on the 34. They got the white shirts. They got the brown numbers, brown stripes on the helmets, brown socks. They got Mello, obviously, as the quarterback. Flanked out here are Arbor and uh, Davis. Jensen on the other side. Mello's in the shotgun right off the bat. We said they were going to throw Mike. Mello looks, spins it out, looks for Jensen. He's got Jensen. He's going to be taken down on about the 38-yard line. He, he gets about four, second and six. There was some danger in that. They left Tamar Sheldon all alone to rush the quarterback. Tamar one step quicker. He'd have been all over Mello. And Dante Ross with another spearing tackle as we saw last week, many game-saving tackles. Dante Ross Murph, is a good one-on-one -on -one tackler. Yes, he is. Dante Ross is a good all-around football player. Davis flanked out to the right with the freshman McClellan. Stoney Turner remains in the shotgun, second about six. Mello takes the snap, looks, calls a high count. Mello looks out to his right. Puts it out for McClellan, a freshman. McClellan's going to come up and meet D.J. Coleman. He's got to be close to the first down, but I think he's going to be a little bit short. It's going to be third and a little bit. Yeah, I don't think he quite make it. Depends on where they mark the ball, Mike. That time, Tamar Sheldon actually tipped that ball and redirected its flight, and it was still there. Hey, what do you think, Murph? They come out shotgun two plays right in a row. Stonington's here to throw the ball, and they're here to make a statement. Yeah, they are. Stonington's going to use that short pass as their running game. Let's see what they do, and it's a wise move because up front the Falcons will control, but there's a lot of speed on this Stonington team. Mello still in the shotgun, third down, a little over one. Francis, who was formerly the tight end, here's the quarterback draw. Mello goes up, and he's going to get first down. He's going to get the lean. He's going to be up to the 40-yard line. He's going to have the first down. Mello ran hard. They should have seen that play coming. You could see Mello inching up before the ball was snapped. It also could have been a legal procedure in him doing that, but... Fitz should have been prepared for that and should have been able to stop it. Well, they run it quite a bit, Mike. We see Mello run that quarterback draw a lot when he's over center. When he comes back, takes two drop back steps, Mike, and takes off. We haven't seen him do it out of the shotgun, but I'd be looking for Mello to run the run quite a bit tonight. And as the Fitz defensive line tries to get him, he might be running for his life. He may. Let's see what Mello does. First down on your own 40. First down for Stonington. A little over nine to go in the first period. Stonington's on the ball since the beginning. Straight snap. Here comes Shelton. Puts it off for Jensen. Jensen gets nailed again. Dante Ross again. The Inferno. Same play as they ran the first play of this series. They went ahead and left to Marshall unguarded to rush the quarterback, knowing that Mello wasn't going to have to take a drop step. Zipped it out to uh, his receiver, and that was it. That's a brave move by Coach Bunicor because what they're counting in is Mello can throw the ball to Jensen, who's open before Sheldon get to him. Well, if Mello had to drop back and throw that pass, he would have been sacked. Well, they get almost, uh, they get five yards, so it's going to be second down in about uh, five. Look for a long pass here, Mike. Could be. They got triple receivers to the right. Mello looks straight back. Blocked by Lucy. Puts it off. Caught by Jensen. What a catch. Jensen's got the first down. He's only a sophomore. Yeah, they ran trips right on that play. They had the one receiver run a crossing pattern across the middle, let the, the other two receivers run everybody else off downfield, creating an opening for that pass. And that's an eight-yard gain for a first down, guys. Mello's thrown the ball four times. He's four for four with completions, but that's the story. And I talked to Coach Jim Junico Sr. He says, we're going to do something different tonight. Well, yes. I guess they have. He sure never passed. Jim Junico <laughs> Sr. On the 42-yard line of the Falcons. Still with the ball is Stonington. Two first downs right off. All on pass plays. Back to Mello. Mello looks. Mello's going to put it out. He's looking for Jensen down. It's going to be overthrown. Jensen's caught three passes already. Well, you know what they say, Mike. Three things could happen when you pass, and two of them are bad. You know what they never say? The quarterback can get sacked, too. <laughs> he don't think that's so hard. But Mello is a big, strong kid. What do you think about his size right off the bat, Phil? Good size for a player. Uh, I, I really don't know what size he is. He six looks pretty two, good. 6'2", 190, Murph is about what he does. He's a good-sized kid. He's a very powerful kid, very muscular. That's a good-sized quarterback for high school football. Yeah. But what a kicker. And he don't want to kick tonight, I know. Yeah. <laughs> he may try a 90-yarder here before. So over second down and 10 from the 42-yarder in the Falcons. Get him, get him, get him. 
Mello drops straight back, rolls a little bit to the right, being chased by George Hall. Mello's going to pull it down, and Mello's going to get down to about the 40-yard line. He's going to get three, third and seven, but George Hall was coming on him like a freight train. Well, John Norris did a good job of keeping contained. The uh, Fitch defensive line lost contain on that play, and that's what he was able to get outside. And, uh, 52, Ryan Milton, one of the captains, chased him out of bounds, too. And that, guys, was a bit of a game. We're going to have third and about eight, Mike. And, but the Bears are in fourth down territory. Murph, they're on the Fitch 40-yard line. I think we should look for that pass across the middle that he threw in the last series. Uh, got him pretty good yardage. The middle is always open. They're going to have two receivers out to the left, two receivers to the right. They're in the shotgun. They spread it out as much as you can. Lucy is the up back, number 32, third and seven from the Fitch 40-yard line. Mello drops straight back. Mello being pressured. Mello puts it out. He's going to throw it intended for Baker. A little bit long, so it's going to be fourth down and about seven from the 40. Count it up, Ronnie. 57. They try it? No, I don't think they'll try it this early, Mike. They don't want to give field the position. But what happened right there is what Murphy had been talking about earlier. Phil, Tamar Shelton just welcomed Mike Mello to door field. Yes, he did. And Mello was shaking his head as he got up. He delivered a heck of a blow. You can't take too many of those standing back there at quarterback. And he's now got a punt. And that's what's happening when they look to throw long. Murph. That's why Stornington's coming out in this shotgun. They've thrown it every time. They don't even have a guy back, but the short passes are going to be much more effective than the long ones. They're using a short pass in the running game it's the same way that San Francisco used to do it with Roger Craig because they know they can't run on Fitch. And in the long run, it could wear Fitch's defensive line out trying to rush the quarterback. Yeah, they could get tired. Or who's going to get tired first? Mellow with a line, or who knows? <laughs> and it is, a, it is a decently warm night, too. Oh, it's very hot and humid. I'm in my shorts. A it's a beautiful night, fellas. A lot the of trick guys. is, is you're going to have to lay some wood on Mellow yeah. to make him a little bit skittish. Kind of like what just happened right yeah. there. There you go. Tamar Shelton welcomed Mellow to Door Field. Eight minutes, 43 seconds left to play first quarter. No score, but guys, but Stonington has moved the ball. 25 yards in their opening series, but now they're going to have to punt it away with a fourth and eight on about the Falcon 40-yard line. Well, let's face it. There aren't many teams that have good memories of ever playing here, so you know, this is a nightmare game for anybody well, yeah, who there shows are, up. There are, Murph. So if you go back to pre-1990, there's probably a lot of teams that had a lot of fun out here. As Fitch uh, in 1972 was ranked one of the 10 worst teams in the they're nation. Not Ronnie, they're not punting. No, they're not going to go. They're going to. They're in fourth down territory. But you might see a quick kick here, fellas. Fourth and seven. Could be. Mello is very talented. Mello's in the shotgun. He's got flankers to the left, flankers to the right. Fourth and seven. Mello looks, rolls to his left. Going to put it out there for Jensen. Jensen stretches himself out. It looks like they're going to call. No, that was Kyle Smith, number three. Looks like they're going to call it a catch. Yeah, it looks like we have a first down. Kyle Lobjack, Mike, number one, I believe, was extended out. For a beautiful catch on a first down. Oh no, I'm sorry. It was You're Smith. Right. <laughs> You're Number right. Three. I apologize for that. Al Lojack's on the side over there. <laughs> yeah. When Mello sprints out, he's creating problems for Fitch. Their defensive ends are not getting upfield, getting any containment on him whatsoever. They, they, they have a clean passing lane. On the 31-yard line, see what happens. Mello still in that shotgun. They've marched three first downs. Mello drops a couple steps back. Looking for Jensen on the right. He's going to put it out to Jensen on the sideline. Jensen makes the catch. And I'll tell you, that one is going to be intercepted before the end of the night by Donnie Ross because Dante Ross was kind of counting the steps. Nice cut out by Jensen. Dante has to be careful to not jump that pass, though, because if Mello pump fakes and Jensen goes upfield, he's dead. And you'll see Jensen do it. He's an incredible receiver. And we haven't saw a team move the ball on a consistent level like this as we've seen Stonington. Mike and Phil have already run the ball ten times. And Mello six for six, uh, uh, six for seven passing the ball. And they've already run off about five minutes off the clock, too. Yeah. Fitch down. usually has 20 points by this time. Second and two at about the 23-yard line. 23-yard line of the Falcons. Bears still have the ball. Mello looks. He's looking out to his left. Throws it across the middle. And, boy, Maddox just nailed someone. I don't think Arbor, the running back 22, is going to want to go back there again. No, Brett Arbor took a serious hit. That's the kind of hit that give receivers alligator arms. Mad Dog Maddox timed it perfectly, fellas, and he undercut Arbor right there when he was going to get it. The ball wasn't catchable, but Maddox again said, I'm going to welcome you to Dorfield myself. That is another key to slowing down this passing attack to make those receivers pay every time they go after the ball. Third down and two, the 23-yard line. We may see this drawer that Ronnie just gave me a signal in. Jetson goes in motion. Mello with it, takes a step forward. 
high count. Hoping the Falcons are going to go offside. Mellow's looking. Looks straight back. He's going to look for, G for Jensen. Jensen dropped that one. Jensen would have had the first down at about the 19, but it went right through his hands. And Jensen was wide open on that play. Fitch Jensen. is not reacting very well right now. Not to the short pass, Murph. Doesn't seem to be. And Jensen won't drop many like that, guys. That hit him squarely in the hands, and he's mad at himself. He's coming back to the huddle. He knows he normally would have had that catch. But, Mike, it's going to be fourth down, fourth and about two. And, the, of course, they're going to go for it. But this this is clearly field goal territory. They're on the, and I can't see the lines 23. too well. Uh, 23 yards. That's a 40-yarder, guys. That's a chip shot for Mello, but uh, Stonington wants to go for the first down. Stonington smelling six here. And this is going to be a big play in this game because we'll see with your confidence. Flanked out to the left is Jensen. Flanked to the right is Kyle Smith in the slots, Arbor. They're looking straight out for Jensen. Throws it up high, and there was Dante Ross. They was all the way. They're going to Jensen. Yeah, Dante Ross did a good job. He was right there waiting for that play. Melo had to get it up high, at least to have a chance to complete that pass. Four minutes and 42 seconds. Stonington took off the clock. Fitch gets the ball back. 7-18 left to play first quarter. Stonington proved they can move the ball coming out in this shotgun, as they did with those short passes. And uh, Falcons now have the ball, and we'll see what they do on offense. They're going to score. That's what they do on offense. Let's see what the Falcons do. Double wing T to vote a quarterback. George Hall at one halfback. Maddox the other. Dante Ross. Pitch back to Maddox. Maddox breaks it to the left. Breaks it to the side. Maddox has first down. Maddox has more. Maddox is going. Maddox is up to the half. 50 yard line. Maddox is still going. He's dragging Kyle Smith as far as you can drag somebody. That was an incredible run. Incredible effort by Mad Dog Maddox. That's why they call him the Mad Dog. He just dragged Stonington players for about 15 yards out of that carry. That was one of the most incredible runs you'll ever see. See that one on Comcast with Mike Devine this week when he makes the replays. You won't believe that run. As Murphy said, he dragged some people 15 yards. That was a 30-yard run, and we got a timeout here. 30-yard run by Maddox. Oh, Carried gosh. somebody 15. We'll keep it here, guys. That Murphy, you see many runs like that? No, you don't see you don't see runs like that. That's why, in my estimation, Matt Maddox is the best football player in the state. And by the way, that was an excellently run draw on behalf of the Fitch line. Very well executed. And what it was was it was the pitch play, kind of like student body left. DeVoe turned around, pitched back to Maddox, Murph. But then I saw DeVoe leading the parade of blockers through the line. But the big block had to be when Maddox was almost down. Brandon Cook came over, and I want to tell you something. He said hi to Mr. Tebbets from Stonington, number 50, and he hit him hard. Tebbets wasn't going to make the tackle, but it was like an open season. As Maddox was dragging Stonington players around, he says, I think I'm going to hit somebody. He said hi to Mr. Tebbets. Well, Maddox was hit somewhere around uh, About the within 40. the first five yards. He got hit and just continued to pinball and drag his way for a 30-yard game. That was just an awesome run. He almost got through, guys, when we broke through. 6.56 left to play. Here come the Falcons. They got the ball on the 47-yard line of the Stonington Bears. First and 10. Right off the bat, they ran 30 yards, Maddox did. Double wing take for the Falcons. They're in Stonington territory on the 47-yard line. Dante Ross in motion. Pitch back to Dante Ross. Dante's 45. Dante's 40. He's gone. Dante's got no. He's got a touchdown as he just broke the tackle from uh, Blake Jensen. Dante Ross, 40. I told you the offense would score. Two plays, 77 yards. Touchdown. That was an excellent play. Stonington was bunched up on the line of scrimmage, and as soon as Dante broke it, he's got the kind of speed. That's why he's known as the Inferno. Maddox runs left. Hall, uh, Dante runs right, and a Hall takes it up the middle. That's their offense. And every once in a while, Will DeVoe surprise somebody and throw a nice pass. Falcons going for two. They run two plays. They scored six points. They lead six to nothing. That was a big touchdown, too, after the way Stonington moved the ball down the field. Stonington's not feeling too good about themselves right now. And Maddox in motion. George Hall. Up his side to George Hall, and George Hall gets the two. The only thing stop Hall on that play is the goalpost if he runs into it. So the score is eight to nothing. And again, it's a situation where the Falcons only averaging 54 points a game this year. Get on the board, less than a minute, 77 yards. I tell you what, Murph, that's a wonderful point that you just brought up. The fact that Stonington ran off about 15 plays, moved the ball on short passes. Every play Stonington ran was out of the shotgun, moved the ball about 60 yards. Turn it over on down to Fitch. They did move the ball, but they came up with nothing. Fitch runs two plays. They got eight points. That's got to hurt Stonington. It does. I mean, football is a game of emotion, particularly at the high school level. And that kind of turnaround, that knocks you down a little bit. 
got to knock you down, Mike. Falcon's going to kick off, but boy, that run by Maddox was beautiful. The run by Ross was absolutely beautiful, too. Maddox dragging people, slagging. You thought he was going to be stopped for about a six, seven, eight yard gain. Next thing you know, he's got 30 yards. He's got some hurt stone at the people. Well, Ross ran over two guys, too. I think Stonington thought they had the speed to match up with Fitch. That's why they were uptight like this, because they're fast guys are good tacklers, but they're finding out they don't. So we'll see what Coach Bunicord Jr. does. He's a good coach. He'll figure out what he's going to do, but he's going to need to get the halftime alive to do it. Cook's going to kick off. High kick for Cook. Somebody's calling Ronnie on the phone. McClellan takes it. McClellan brings it up to about to 36 breaks away from somebody else and he's on about the 38 yard line nice run back by mcclellan yeah they've got good field position this doesn't bode well for fitch falcon defense the way mellow's been moving the ball let's see what they do against each other this time mike uh, fitch really needs to step it up and get some more pressure on mellow to slow them down you maybe if you fit put some of your faster guys in on the defensive line to put pressure well, they're technique-wise, they're just not doing good enough field, doing good enough job getting free of the blockers to get upfield. Let's see what they got. They got three flankers to the right. Stonington remains in the shotgun. We got Davis, we got Jensen, we got Baker on the side. Mello looks, going to put it out, and it's intended for Brent Arbor, and that's going to be overthrown. And the passing is not as crisp because Fitch is starting to figure some of these formations out. Well, hopefully they are, but what you're also seeing is is that they've got a back back there protecting Mello from anyone that breaks through, and that is helping them. Unfortunately for Fitch, they're not having anybody break through. Yeah, and again, Lucy's back there, and that's kind of like how you block for a punter. The way they've got this situation, Lucy's been taken on the first guy through. McClellan flanked to the right, Smith flanked over here to the right, Blake Jensen on the left. See what happens. Mello in the shotgun, gets the snap, puts it out to the right, and it's going to be overthrown to Tennant for McClellan. I'll tell you who's doing a good job. It's Steve Francis. It's only his second week at center, and he's making those snaps good to Mello. That's well, a good point. He's one of the captains, so he obviously is a skilled football player. He is doing a good job. Mello's trying to go to his right, the side that he has that additional protection on. And what I'm seeing is, is that Shelton is uh, the pressure that he puts on by putting his hands up is causing Mello to throw a little bit high. Well, Murph, the, the first five or six passes that Mello threw were right on the numbers, but he's been high and wide and short by then. What do you think that's alluded to? It's hard to say. Maybe his mechanics could be a little bit off. I just don't know because he was very, very sharp that first series. Let's see what Mello does. Takes the ball. Shotgun. Going to put it out here. Tenant for Arbor and it's off his hands. Arbor being guarded by my boy DJ Coleman, my favorite sophomore. Fourth down. We'll see Mello punt this time. And we want to tell everybody that there's one Falcon that couldn't be here tonight. His mom called me at work. At, at work, Tyler Walworth. His brother's getting married in Newport, but she's going to be calling back to the studio, back to the station to find out what the score is all the time because even though there's a wedding going on they want to know what the score is well tyler walworth is one of my favorite players yeah he didn't want to miss it but uh, i told him his brother should have got married on thursday all right mellow gets a nice not one of his best kicks gonna be bouncing around dante ross has it. he's gonna run parallel gonna try to get to the outside and he's gonna break the tackle by arbor and he's gonna get up to about the 31 yard line but that wasn't one of Mello's better kicks no but i want to tell you right now that old andrew bergen just introduced himself to number 43 of the stone <laughs> bears not on our roster i don't know who it is so if we got a 43 over there for Stonington, let me know because i'll tell you what 315 pound andrew bergen just said hi man well i'm sure number 43 doesn't know who he is right now either but these Fitch guys are so nice according to introducing themselves to all these players that's why it's fun to do the games at when the field. game starts it's over baby I think their defense against Mello putting is to put out a fierce rush that time Matt Maddox was right in his face and I think it forced him to get off a kick quicker than he wanted to double wing T Falcons head eight to nothing Ray McCrawl handoff inside to Maddox Maddox breaks it from the left Maddox goes over someone Maddox runs into George Hall George Hall had to tackle that line because Maddox was on his way again up to the 45 yard line well, the inevitable beginning of the onslaught has arrived for Stonington. They're going to be the recipient of another Fitch drive. We got another. We went for the 31. 
So we got another 14 yards. So he's got two carries, 44 yards. Not bad for him. And Ray McRaw, who usually plays later in the game, was in there on that play in the handoff. He's still in there. Well, he's taking uh, Tyler Walworth's place. Yeah. He's doing a fine job. Young, now young Ray's a senior, but he doesn't have a lot of playing time. Coleman, he's lost, but he found his way. He'll be all set. They're in that double wing tee. He's only a sophomore. Great player. McCrawl going to carry the ball. McCrawl gets offside. McCrawl runs like a man possessed. He's got a first down to the 41-yard line. Ray McCrawl just ranks off 14 yards. That young man can run. Hey, Murph, and I look at the Fitch offensive <laughs> line, and they're down there where the tackle is being made 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. That means they're doing their job. They're getting a great offensive line push tonight, which is uh, different than it was last week when it seemed like East Hartford pushed them around a little bit and we're jumping the gaps on them. This time they're making contact and driving Stonington down the field. Eight to nothing, Falcons. They got the ball on the beer, 41. DeVoe's still a quarterback. George Hall's only carried it once. George Hall takes it, smashes people, spins over people, carrying people, banging over Jensen, carrying through people, and he's just like, he gets down to the 26-yard line, another big run, and Hall just is like, he runs like he's in a pinball machine. He looked like a battering ram going through there, <laughs> just swinging his arms, knocking Stonington tacklers away from him. And these Stonington tackle, they know how to tackle. But it's just these Fitch guys that you don't realize how good Fitch is. No, this Fitch team was a huge physical team. More physical and bigger than any Fitch team we've seen in the last couple of years. And boy, they have some college prospects on this team. First down on the 28-yard line for the Falcons. They already had eight to nothing. DeVoe keeps it on the bootleg. DeVoe's looking for Cook. You know he's looking for Cook. Puts it out there. He got it. Cook catches it. Cook gets his first touchdown. Beautiful there you catch. Go. Beautiful pass by Will DeVoe on the run. Rolling to his right. Throws a strike. A 30-yard strike to Brandon Cook, who makes an excellent catch all with his hands, Murph. Very well executed play. The blocking was perfect. DeVoe hit the ball on his hip like a pro. And Brandon Cook was wide open and caught that ball with a little interference in the way. You know, he's, he's picked up a lot of confidence in these last couple of weeks. He's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Well, I think the Fitch kids do like the New London kids do. DeVoe's going to try the extra point here. When I was watching him kick pregame, like he was kicking some long ones. Yes, and he can. He did last year. Yeah. Always memory goes for the first one for two. Let's see what that kick is up. I'll tell you what, DeVoe ain't too bad either with that kick. There's the extra point from Will DeVoe. What did DeVoe have, like 30 extra points Over 30. Last year? 33. <laughs> Easily in the high 30s. But when's the last time number seven as a quarterback at Fitch lost a regular season game? Was before us? <laughs> Long time ago. I don't remember. <laughs> the score 15 for the Falcons, 8 for the Bears. Welcome to high school football. And I'll tell you something. Four minutes and 40 seconds left to play in the first quarter. And Fitch has had no problem moving the ball on this Stonington defense. No, they haven't. And once again, that was a big touchdown. It was a big defensive stand by Fitch. This last time, Stonington right now scratching their head saying, gee, I thought we were going to be in this game. Apparently not. Yeah, and it's up to Stonington to right now make sure this game doesn't get out of hand because this game could get out of hand real quick. This is a big drive for Stonington right here, Murph. I agree with you, Ronnie. Stonington's got to at least get a first down. they got to feel they can move the ball again. The last couple of times they've been three and out. So we'll see. But again, we have our listening li listening people over at Stonington, too. That's right. Because everybody will be watching this game. So it's one of the rare treats that we get. But it's a rare treat whenever you watch Fitch football because it's unbelievable. Cook with the kickoff. Going to get it along the ground. It's going to be taken up by McClellan. McClellan's going to get up to about the 36-yard line. It's going to be first down for the Bears. You know what the senior class record for Fitch is in football? What's that? 35 and 2. <laughs> And their regular season record, Mike? For they the never class? lose record. Just so just they played, uh, They've only lost two games in the past, well, four years now. And those, one was the staple games where you did with a quarterback sneak. That's why we don't let you do the games anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and the other was the game to Massac that I should have been fired of winning. But I knew the kid would, you know who's stop playing? Remember that little number three they put in for Massac? Yeah. He should stop playing the shit. The yeah. little rascal. The rascal you call him. Yeah, like. he caught the pass, so that rascal. Okay. <laughs> First out of... <laughs> 36 yard line for the Bears. Mello's going to throw to his right this time. Mello looks. He's going to roll it. Puts it out to the left. He's got Johnny Baker there. And like I told you, Dante Ross is going to pick one off. Ross has got it, bringing it back. He's going to keep on going. He's down to the 39 yard line. You knew he was lurking. Yes, he was. And you could tell by the 
the way that Stonington was protecting the quarterback that he was going to throw in that direction yep. before the ball was even snapped. And Dante Ross playing center field for Fitch, proving up to be one of the top defensive men on the team this year. Mike, what do you see? Mello, he's a little bit bent over a few days, but I think he got nailed pretty good there, him and Smith, so we'll see what happens. Well, that's yeah, what happens. Tomorrow, tomorrow Shelton put a big hit yeah. on him from the backside, Mike. When he throws deep, Murph, the rush gets into him. they got to keep throwing it short, it seems to me. Looks like on the 39-yard line, Falcons have it. First two drives have been pretty simple. It's 15 to nothing. We said it's seven minutes to go. The Fitch offense got the ball. Fitch offense got the ball third time. It's 15 to nothing. 423 left to play first quarter. It took Fitch about three minutes, uh, Murph, to score two touchdowns, and they got the ball in good field position again. So Falcons called timeout. We'll keep it here. I got to tell you, before the game, Mike, I had a nice talk with Jim Bunico Sr., and he's going down to homecoming, down to where he graduated. In, same, in Alabama. Same college my brother went to, and okay. I really want to thank uh, Coach Bunico. He helped my brother a lot. Way back in the 60s, my brother graduated 66 from Fitch, Mike, and Coach Coach Bunicor was an assistant coach here, and he helped my brother go to college at his alma mater, and he's going down there for the first time in about 30 years, and uh, he was real excited. He had a smile, Mike, from one side of his face to the other. You will never see very many people at their zenith of happiness. Jim Bunicor in 1983 won the first state championship ever for New London at Charrington. They played the game at UConn. We were standing up on the top. I was exhausted because I couldn't walk the stairs there. But he was telling me what it felt like, and you could see a smile. Great guy, Jim Bunico. We had a lot of good years together. Four state championships, you name it. He's a classy guy, Mike. All right, really first is. down on the 39-yard line. Maddox in motion. Pitch back to Maddox. Maddox lowers the shoulder. For the first time, they've come up and stopped Maddox. He gets like two yards. Well, that pitch was a little high, and I think that probably took a little something out of that play. And Stonington did a good job in leaking through and getting penetration in uh, Fitch's line that time. And just uh, about a two-yard gain, the shortest gain for Falcons uh, this game thus, thus far. But Murph's right. The pitch was up in Maddox's head area and kind of he was you can see him kind of start a step there Murph when he caught the pitch yeah Tevinson struck did a good job in there Maddox got over 300 yards for the season we'll see what they do second down and eight from the 37 yard line in motion is Dante Ross DeVoe's going to keep it. he's going to spin out good block by Russ but I'll tell you talk about perseverance number was that 88 and Jimmy Jim Nicholas, Nicholas. Jim he, Nicholas. he fought off the block by Ross and nailed the quarterback he did a great job Dante Ross went out there and had a decent block on him DeVoe tried to scramble around and Nicholas did a good job of staying with it and one player who has been silent tonight who was great against New London last week was 51 Andrew Logan the linebacker I mean, he was all over the yeah. place playing a guy possessed. Littlest guy in the field, but boy, he's got the biggest heart out there. I'll tell you what, he's all over the field, Mike. We got about third down, about 13. Third, no, excuse me, third about 17 from the 47-yard line of the Bears. See what the Falcons do. DeVoe keeps it, puts it on his head. Screen pass over to Maddox, and he's got all the room in the world to run it. Berrigan comes with a block. <laughs> he's down close to the first down, but I'll tell you, Blake Jensen is the smartest guy in, in high school football. Berrigan was coming down like a freight train, and Blake Jensen just stepped aside, and then he made come away. Because, boy, you don't want to get hit by that train. It looked like that play was going to get a lot more yards than it did. Stonington did a great job in closing and closing it off before the first down. And Dan Carey, the offensive tackle for the offensive guard for Fitz, was out in front, along with uh, uh, number 70, Eric Herman, and... and uh, uh, Pat Hansen and Eric Wilson, they've got a great offensive line, line these Falcons. Fourth and one, Ronnie, from the 30-yard line. Falcons with the ball ahead. All, all look at it, fellas. See what they do. Devote to long count. Paul gets it, gets more. He's pushing people, pushing the pile. He's going to get four down to the 27. First down, Falcons. Like I said, all look at it. Fourth and one, Murph. Not much mystery in who's getting that ball. There shouldn't be. He's the biggest, strongest, meanest fullback in the state. And, meanest, meanest. And it's amazing. If he if he got the ball 30 times, how many yards would he have? Oh. Well, how many hurt tacklers would there be? You know, he, he gets the ball. He just looks for people to run over. Because he's mad. He doesn't get the ball. That's what his problem is. But when he don't have the ball, he's knocking somebody down, Mike. Yeah, he's mad. That's why he plays. He wants the ball. Ross for that quick handoff inside that they do on a stretch. Tries to get the corner. Gets the corner around Nicholas. Donnie Ross is going to be into the end zone. He's in. We'll see what they say. They may knock it down. No, touch well, he's it down. In, Mike. He's in. That was just a beautiful run by Dante Ross. 
He made one cut, it's just pure speed. And that, pure was that, speed. that was that play, guys, where the back goes about one step behind the quarterback. It's a timing play, Murph, where the quarterback gets a snap, just turns around and gives it to him. He beats the guys around the end. And you can see where Will DeVoe's timing now is coming into play. He missed a lot of practice early in the year. Clip it. I'm sorry, let me interrupt you. Clip it. Clip it, huh? <laughs> Called it back. Take them points off. Take that long run by Dante Ross uh, right off the board, but that was a nice run. It's still going to be a first down. Falcons are going to have the ball on about the 33-yard line. Going to be a clip call against the Falcons, and they'll take over. First down, a minute 36 left to play first quarter. Falcons with the ball, with the lead, 15-0. to Hey, Mike, I got a question for you. Does Fitch have a play for first down and 15? Yeah, you watch. <laughs> It's just probably to pitch back to Maddox. I on the left. Mike, I haven't seen a shuttle pass yet today. It might be, Ronnie Yang, because it's first down and 25, really. Ross looks. There it is. He looked fake the shuttle pass. He's rolling to his right. And I'll tell you, there's Logan. He, We found him there. Andrew Logan, 51. Yeah, Logan, 51, and number 52. JT Debrier, uh, Murph. Yeah, they, they called him that time. I don't think they have a play, Phil, for second and 33, though. They may. Well, they might throw that screen again, but we might see that shuttle pass. But in any event, Stonington's defense stepping up right now. Some good defensive play by the Stonington line. Yeah, they've put some severe pressure on DeVoe when he's going back to pass. Fish has got to do a better job protecting him. One of the problems with the shuttle pass is they don't have Michael Hall off the wing. The two smaller guys can get knocked down in traffic. So that's one of the reasons tonight. They fake it a lot, though, because DeVoe always fakes it. Second and 33 from the 45-yard line of the BS. Falcons ahead 15 nothing. had one call back on a clip. DeVoe comes straight back. Nice block by Maddox. Throws it out here to the right. And that's going to be extended for George Hall. And that's be third down in all the yards you could possibly get. That was a quick screen. Had it been successful, might have been called back anyway because Pat Hanson was already 10 yards downfield by the time the ball reached him. Hell, it looked like it was going to be a partial screen, huh, Murph? For all was about two yards over the line of scrimmage. But uh, big rush again by the Stonington Bears. Their, their defensive line is saying hi to Mr. DeVoe. Yes, they are. They're introducing themselves like the gentlemen they are. Well, the Baron will do good. Baron DeVoe. We'll see what he does out there because he's ready to play. From the 45-yard third, 33, McCrawl's in there. Handoff is Maddox. To Maddox. Maddox on that cross, but carrying people. He's only going to get up to about the 35-yard line. Going to be fourth down, and uh, give or take 20. Well, he picked up about half the yards that he needed for that first down. They could conceivably get a first down here. We'll see what they do. Ray McCrawl, number 27, is in the game, the senior. Here comes Cook. Here comes Ross. I look for Kirk here, Murph. I think that the Falcons like throwing to him in this time, this area. It's fourth down and about. Mike, what did you say, 17? Something like that, 17, round 20. Yep. Well, they've got both That's, Ross and Cook in there right now. That's going to be the end of the first quarter, guys. That'll be it. So we'll take a break. That's the end of the first quarter with the score of Fitz 15, Stonington 0. We'll take a timeout. You're listening to the Ticket 980 WSUB ESPN Radio. I just realized since they are in Stonington. But since we are in Stonington, how you doing, buddy? do a little bit better job to call their guys. That's my whole Andrew Logan. Yeah, I uh, love uh, 25 seconds. Yeah, yeah, we'll take it back. Thank you. I'll walk out. I'll be okay, thanks. Door field, 15 for the Falcons, zero for Sporting to Bears. Fitch has got a fourth in about 17. Hey guys, how surprised were we to see Stonington come back and play a shotgun the entire game? No running backs the entire game. Well, obviously, Jim Butikor is a, is a very well-schooled, experienced coach. He knows what he has to do to win this game, and I think he feels that's his best shot to do it. Yeah, he's he's hanging in there. And uh, but. You know, one of the things is you can't go the whole thing by passing. You throw the ball 50 times, you've got problems. They got to, let me see. We'll see what happens here. Wait a minute. Ronnie. Ronnie. 
Devoe rolls out to his left. He's looking for Dante Ross. What a catch! A circus catch by Donnie Ross if they call it. That was almost like the immaculate with something. Yes. But Ross hit it, bounced up, hit a stone at some player in his shoulder pads, back bounced up, and Ross was there to catch it. Before you say it, he's not going to jump like that in basketball. I'm telling you right now. Forget that kind of story. That Tremendous concentration by Dante Ross to pull that pass in. Gives Falcons a first and goal to go on about the six-yard line. Good concentration by Dante, the Inferno Ross. And Stonington had thought they had stopped them, Phil. And all of a sudden, Fitch makes that big play, and Dante Ross has been a big player. Only a junior. Pitch back to Dante Ross. Dante Ross, all of a sudden, he's run into some big-time Stonington players. It looks like Mark Tebbets and probably Steve Francis. Mark Tebbets, 50. Yeah, Mike Mello was right there at the point of attack, too. That was a very good play on uh, Stonington's defense. Let me tell you something. Stonington's going to be a good team in ECC. They're tough. It's just Fitch is at a different level. Well, Fitch is pretty much at a different level from anybody <laughs> in, uh, this in this state right now. Second down goal from the five-yard line. Falcons ahead 15-0, 11 9 to go. We just started the second period. Falcons with the ball moving from your left to your right. Throw with the long count. Hand off inside to George Hall. There's going to be Holden right in there. You can bet on that because that flag went right in there. Hall went into the end zone, but I don't think they're going to count this one. They're going to march this one back. This drive has been probably 500 yards already with all the penalties <laughs> they've had, and they haven't got anywhere yet. Yeah, that was definitely holding on that play. Hall did score, but they're calling it back. They've had two scores called back this uh, in this drive alone. What's this deal now in the NFL where the coaches have this flag that they throw out there? Yeah, that's to for instant replay. <laughs> That's probably, you know how they throw it? Ah, that was a lousy <laughs> You know, and, uh, I don't agree with the way instant replay yeah. works anyway. Uh, you know, you really, uh, calls really don't get overturned. All it is basically is saying, is there a basis for us to overturn yeah. this call? Yeah, please give us a reason. Okay, they're back to the 15. So second and goal from the 15. Below the quarterback. Hand off inside to... Uh, Looks like Dante Ross. Donnie yeah. Ross got that inside hand up. It fooled me because I thought DeVoe was going to roll out and throw the ball to Cook. That was that crossbuck play in there. Double handoff. But I'll tell you what, somebody was standing alone in the end zone, and he was six foot five. So the ball may be going out there pretty soon, that being Tremar Shelton. was standing wide open in the end zone. Third down. Got down to the 10. Third and goal from the 10. DeVoe to quarterback. Call. Fullback. Dante Ross and uh, Mad Dog Maddox in the backfield with him. DeVoe's going to roll out to his left. DeVoe's going to put it up. He's going to tend it for Cook. And guess who got his second touchdown of his career? Brandon Cook, number eight. He's really got it down, though. He's really got his hands in great position, nice and soft. Just letting the ball come in, and he's just squeezing it in. 21. And you know, so DeVoe throws the type of pass that a young receiver needs. Nice and soft out here. Cook's got the size. Cook's got the jumping ability. 6'3 also. Shields his body well. He's been learning. I don't know who the tight end coach is, but they've worked with him. Well, he's a dangerous weapon. With his size, he's on the end of that line. He blocks down and just kind of drifts over. And the he's tough to stop. Tight end can get lost easy. DeVoe puts it up. He's going to have it good. So with the score, 22 for the Falcons, zero for the Stonington Bears. You're listening to the ticket 980 WSUB ESPN Radio. Just 30 seconds. Okay? Just 30. Thank you. No, we're fine. Ronnie is getting hot dogs or something, so we'll try to stumble through this. Let's talk about how Stonington feels right now. Thank you. And here we are at Dorfield with 10.08 in the first period. 22 to nothing for the Falcons. What do you think the Bears are thinking right now? I think they're thinking, gee, <laughs> same old thing is happening to us again. This fish team was pretty good. We thought we were better than this. And they are playing. They're playing the hidden hard. They're doing the different things you got to do. And they're an ECC team. Fitch is a state team. Yeah, they are. They, they've, got, uh, they've got some good players on their team, a number of them. You know, they got Joshua Strunk and Andrew Mike Logan. Mello and, and Blake Jensen. They're all 
good, sound players. But this is an ECC team, as you said, and Fitch really is a state championship caliber team. That's all there is to it. No kickoff, man. Matt Maddox hasn't kicked off, so he'll do that. Just add this to his resume. Maddox kicks off, squibs it. Going to be taken by Arbor. Arbor's going to get up, going to get a little space, and he's going to be brought down on about the 42-yard line. I thought Maddox was going to try to run under that kick and catch it. <laughs> Dan Landeck and Russell Connell <laughs> made a nice tackle there. Let's see what they do. Falk, they didn't have the ball until seven minutes were left. So in nine minutes, they scored 22 points. And they had a lot of penalties, or it might have been faster. This is what we usually expect from them, you know, early in the second quarter. They usually have about 20 points. Well, let's see what the Bears do. They come out double flankers to the right. Mellow's the quarterback. Francis has done a marvelous job snapping the ball, I'll tell you that much. Good snap again, Mello rolls to the right. Mello looks, puts the ball out for Jensen. We'll see what they call it, because Jensen went down on the ground to get it, and they call it a catch, but I'll tell you what, Jensen went down and got that ball. He's only a sophomore. Yeah, that was a good catch. Jensen's a good ball player, and, it was, and Mello put the ball in the only place where no one was going to pick it off. Yeah, Mello is a good quarterback. Second down, about three. They're having a hard time containing Mello when he rolls out. I think they need to begin to recognize wherever 32 goes, which is John Lucy, is where is how he's going to pass. That's his own personal protector. Lucy is number 32. Mello. Another good stop. Francis Mello's going to put it out. He's looking out there. It's going to be overthrown for Jensen. But I'll tell you what, running the middle of the field is that third receiver. So I think Stonington could go in the middle. But as you say, bad things happen when you go in the middle and you don't do it right. Well, George Hall just uh, hit Mello as he released the ball. The thing is, is that wherever John Lucy goes, that's where Mello's going. If he's going to roll to his right, Lucy leads over there first. Same thing if he goes to his left. When Lucy's lined up in the middle of the field, in the middle of the formation, more than likely Mellon's just going to stay right where he is and try to pinpoint one. Well. Third and three from the 48-yard line, their own 48-yard line. They, the Bears, trailing 28 to nothing to the Fitch Falcons. Mello with that fake, goes right up. He's going to have the first down. He's going to have more, and Mello's down the sideline, and Mello gets pushed out oh, of bounds. Oh, no, he didn't throw a flag on that. Oh, yes, he did. I'm not saying a word. Well, this <laughs> not only was that a bad call, if McCraw was going to hit him, he should have knocked him onto the track to get a flag like that. Well, I mean, what we're talking about is that uh, Mello ran out of bounds, and McCraw came over and, and just pushed him. He wasn't. He didn't even hit him hard, Murph. It wasn't. It should not have been a flag. It was. It was. He, he touched him. I, I wish, for the sake of argument, we had instant replay here to see this well, thing again. It's foggy. That's yeah. what happens. Foggy here. But you know what Stonington has to do then? they got to put Lucy in disguise with glasses. <laughs> that's how they won't know where he's running, right? <laughs> and, Mike, too bad it's, that's going to go over 90% of the kids hearing this on Comcast. That's all right. <laughs> uh, we I, know what you're talking I've, about. I've been mad I got before. nothing to say. All right. First down on the 24-yard line after a brilliant run. Three flankers to the left here. Shotgun Fritz has done a great job of snapping right on the money. Passes inside. Looks like it's for Baker. No, excuse me. Blake Jensen. Is that complete? Incomplete. Well, I hope Fitz picks that up. I mean, that, that is a, a definite key right there. Wherever Lucy goes, you can see that that uh, Bello was going to throw to his left that time because that's where uh, Lucy went. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, I know who's watching that play, Massick. Massick is undefeated. They, Weaver, they want another shot at the Falcons. I mean, Murph, after this play, tell us what you would do now as a coach, knowing that Lucy is, is following the play, how you would defend about that after this play. Right. Jensen to the right, Smith and McClellan to the left, Mello in the shotgun. Third is going to be delay a game on that one, Phil, so you've got a lot of time to tell us. Basically, I would have the defensive backs just keeping an eye on it. Someone keying on Lucy and calling out what they have to do, where the ball is going to go, and being able to anticipate a little bit. As far as an actual defense is concerned, their base defense is fine to cover it, but you know where he's going. The defensive line should also 
be able to pick up and direct their rush in that oh, direction. And Lucy is the blocking back. Mello in the uh, shotgun every snap of the game thus far. We got nine minutes left to play in that first half. And Lucy is the blocking back about five feet in front of him. First and 15 for the BS from the second and 15, excuse me, from the 27. Mello fakes the pump. We got a penalty in the middle of the flag. He puts it out for, uh, looks like Jess is going to be long, but we're going to have a penalty I'll probably you what holding happened, against the... No, uh, what happened was I can see it. They blocked uh, George Hall be below the waist, and it was a shot. They didn't want to get him to go in there. It's going to be blocked below the waist against the Stonington Bears. I saw it. I saw them do that to George Hall, and uh, that's a dangerous thing, Murph, to get caught up into that block below the waist. Yeah, it is. That is a lot of careers. So what was so promising is the first and 10 on the 22, Phil, now goes back to the 45-yard line. They got to get to the 12 at second and 33. Stonington with the ball. Falcons lead 22 to 0. We got nine minutes to play in the first half. Stonington had the ball first. They moved the ball with short passes against Fitch, but Fitch shut him down, scored three touchdowns. They got the lead. See what happens. They're still in the shotgun. Mello takes a snap, looks back, some pressure. Mello puts it out. That's going to be knocked out of out of the way by Ryan Milton, and it was intended for their tight end, John Baker. Ryan right, Milton did a good job on that play, but let me tell you what happened on the play before and why he went for George Hall's knees. That time, it was Lucy that went for Hall's knees. He's the one that got the penalty because he was trying to get Hall's hands down to give Mello a lane to throw. And that time, George Hall just got even because as soon as Mello released that ball, George Hall sent Mello right to the turf with a nice, solid hit on Mello, knocked Mello down. So probably, Murph, they know Hall's getting in there. They got to take him down. They went blocking below his waist. Third down, 33 from the 45-yard line. See what Mello does. They're in a shotgun. They bears been in it all night. Rolls, steps up, puts it out there, and he's going to intend it for Baker, but that's overthrown. And they were all in there on that one. George Hall was there again. We see uh, Cook was in there. A lot of Falcons were in there in that backfield. They had a good pass rush to Marshall. Did an excellent job of contain. Kept Mello from being able to roll all the way out. And that's why he overthrew that ball. Mello's having one of them nights. This is the night you want to come up as big as you possibly can. And, he, and Mello's being neutralized by not a player, but by a team. Well, Door Field is a place, is a field where a lot of dreams die for a lot of teams. Mello gets to punt away, low line drive. Maddox is going to let it go into the end zone. And he's just going to let it be down. It's going to be Falcon ball, first down on their own 20-yard line. 8.42, Ron, 22 nothing Falcons. And Dan Carey's been playing a super game on both sides of the ball for the Falcons, as is Andrew Bergeron for the, uh, the line of Fitch. I mean, Eric Wilson, along with uh, Hanson and Herman and uh, uh, Carey, they're all getting in and they're doing the job, and that's where the game has won and lost in those trenches. I think Mike Mello's a little worse for well, where for, from some of the punishment that he's been taking. Maybe that's why his punting isn't up to par today. Yeah, that's the worst kick I've seen him have in uh, three years, Mike. Maybe I think M Murphy was going for a coffin corner. He almost got it to stop on the two. Well, let's see if they stop the Falcons, which is even more important, Ron. 8.42 to go. Falcons up 22, double wing T. In motion is Maddox. Pitch back to Maddox. Maddox running on the left side. Maddox got the first down. Maddox is up over the 30-yard line. Maddox just like a blur going through there. And that nice spin out by Will DeVoe to end up blocking for him. He was the lead blocker on that play. He did a great job. Nice tackle by Kyle Smith of the Stonington Bears. And Maddox might have went a lot longer. Maddox is just at top speed today. Maddox is probably close to 50, 60, 70 yards already. Ross is close to 70 yards. The Falcons have eaten up a lot of yards, and DeVoe has two touchdown passes. See what happens. First down from the 31-yard line, your own 31-yard line for the Falcons. Ross is in motion. Hand off to George Hall. He's going to run over people, and George Hall gets moving, and I'll tell you what, it was a nice tackle there by Brett Arbor, who got as low as you can be. Did you see what George Hall did, though? <laughs> he saw Arbor, and instead of making a move on him, he's he like, right okay, let me put my shoulder down and try to crush you. I'm not a, I'm not a player. I just crush a lot. Yep. <laughs> I'm the ice crusher. First down at the 41-yard line. Two plays, two first downs. They're from the 20 to the 40-yard line. See what the Falcons do. They're ahead by 22. Here's that inside handoff to Maddox. 
Maddox goes to the left side. Maddox got the first stop. Maddox got more. Maddox going to be brought down. And I'll tell you, that was number seven, Johnny Baker, who brought him down on about the 41 yard line. Here's another 19 yards for Maddox. Yeah, John Baker saved the touchdown on that play. That was a very well conceived play by the Falcons again. And Maddox did what Maddox does. Yeah, that's what he does. Maddox always goes forward. And he always puts the defenders backwards. So I guess he's a good football player. And he's a lot tougher to bring down than you would perceive him to be. He's played a lot tougher without Michael Hall. You realize how tough Maddox is when Michael Hall's not here. <clears throat> First down on the 42-yard line of Stonington. DeVoe hands off inside to George Hall. He's going to carry people down to about the 35-yard line. And George is getting the ball a few times now. He'll be happier. He's never happy, but he'll be happier. <laughs> JT, Debris, JT Debris got a ride on uh, Hall's back that time. I'm sure he liked it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that kid, you give these all brothers credit. Every Sunday morning, I get my coffee down at the great store where they work at, and they serve it to me. They work on Sundays, Mike. The only day of the week that they can work, both of them work. And I'll tell you what, that pays a tribute to where they're at, Murph, in life and everything else. Second. That is a fact. They're both good students as well. That's right. Second and three on the 35-yard line, that of the Stonington. In motion is Ross, but he gives it to George Hall. George Hall gets down close to the 31. Another first down. I think George Hall wants a touchdown here. I think he does, and I think they're trying to give him a little work. Yeah. And before we go too far, in tribute to the fact that Fitch Falcons have student athletes on their team, Brandon Cook is student of the month for Fitch High School. And last week's Pfizer Scholar Athlete. Congratulations to Mary Ann, Mary Ann Harrigan of Stonington. Good Irish girl. Good Irish girl. Mary Ann, congratulations as the Pfizer Student Athlete Player of the Game. 32-yard line, first down. Falcons on them drive from their own 20. They're ahead 22 to nothing. Ross in motion. The, uh, over to Ross. They gave it over. There's another penalty down over there. They had that quick handoff to Ross. You know what? DeVoe must have huge hands because he's able to hide that ball, and Ross just spun right through there. Well, Murph, if, that, if there was a penalty on that one against the Falcons, there, that one should have been a penalty because somebody clobbered Ross when he was out of bounds and just about stopped running. But they're talking to Stonington. It's going to be a hold against the Falcons. That'll back them up. Falcons lead 22-0, 6-19 left to play in the first half. It negated a nice run and also negated a tremendous block by the aforementioned Brandon Cook. He blocked off two Stonington players on that play. And, and one of the things here, and with passing the ball on every down, this has made this a real long half for Stonington, too. Yeah. Because they haven't run much time off the clock. The only, time the only run they can run, Mike, is uh, Mello because there's no uh, running backs to hand the ball off to. Oh, in that formation, no, they're not. First down in about 15, 20 yards. Hand off to Maddox. Maddox breaks to the left side. Maddox gets to the outside. Maddox is down close to the first down. And I'll tell you what, Maddox is placed so much bigger and stronger since Michael Hall has left. We, you, ne you don't realize how powerful he is when you, because Michael Hall is so awesome. Well, he's had to step up to the plate because, let's face it, Michael Hall is a huge cog in this offense, and without him, someone has to take that uh, take that slack. Oh. They're going to measure for a first down, guys. It looks to be right about close. It might make it. I think they made it by about an inch. And here comes a measurement as we look right on Comcast with Mike Devine and his wonderful crew. Falcons got it by three inches. And we want to say hi to all of our Comcast listeners. And this is 980 WSUB. Tune in every Monday through Friday for the, t the time off for sports. Mike, we take your call-ins. We do everything every Monday through Friday from 7 to 9. Tune in. 22-yard line of Stonington, first down for the Falcons. And I got an update on a former Falcon on that between this play. Maddox is in motion, hit off to George Hall. George Hall running over people. George Hall spinning. De heck hanging on George Hall. He's still going. He's spinning. They can't get He's him down. down about the 10-yard line of the first down. The entire Stonington team had to tackle George Hall. He finally went down. I think he said, I've had enough. I'm going to sit down for a minute. The baby, baby. Did you see the way he used his arm yeah. as a battering ram to knock that blocker away? Well, Unbelievable. That's a big-time move. Yes, it is. But usually if you're 225 and you're a junior in high school and you can run and you're gifted like he is, you have two battering rams. It's probably your legs like Real McCoy is at Mount Hermon prep school playing starting safety and backup tailback there 2-0 right now. Well, good for him. He's going to have a good football career. Great kid. First 
in goal. From about the 10 yard line, we're going to have somebody in motion. I don't know. I, he stopped. I don't know if they're going to. Is that against him, guys? Because he went in motion and stopped, and it looked like a bear might have jumped, but it was called by the back judge, the white judge, and it's, he drew yeah. him off sides. What happened? Yes, when he, he did. stopped, Murphy, he drew him off. McCall went in motion, came back, and then the, the Stonington player thought it was the snap of the ball. Yep. And that'll move the ball a little bit closer to the goal line. Fitch knocking on touchdown door as they lead 22 to nothing. Five minutes left to play first half. And the four-yard line. I think they'll decide to let the Hall brother carry it in again, the baby, baby bull. Cook has two TDs. Let's see what they do here. In motion is Maddox. Hand off to Maddox. He's going to get the corner. Walks right in. And boy, this is easy when you watch it on TV. Sure was. Will DeVoe was... Didn't... <laughs> Excellent, excellent fake on that play. 28 nothing for the Falcons. Maddox gets another touchdown. Maddox has a touchdown. Uh, uh, excuse me. Cook has two. Ross has the other. And let's not forget, Maddox was all state as a sophomore as a defensive back. Without a doubt. And uh, nobody forgets it. Believe me, when, you, when you're on your offensive side of the ball, you don't forget Maddox. Is. Maddox is probably, and again, positions dictate things, the best football player in the state of Connecticut. I don't know. Everybody can argue this guy position. Football player. Maddox is the best player. I Mike, agree. Mike Hall is right behind him, fellas. Yes, he is. Or if not even. DeVoe, boy. He's got a strong I'll foot. tell you, I don't know what medicine he had with that mono, but he's kicking the ball like you can't believe. <laughs> Dr. Berrigan must have had that one. Huh? Let's take a break, guys. With the score 29 for Fitch and Stonington 0. You're listening to the ticket 980 WSUB ESPN Radio. Well, how, how, how we doing with spots, Kevin? I tell you what, we only got four minutes for halftime. Let's save them. We'll burn them off for halftime. Sound good? And just, it just... Just your luck, Stonington's throwing the ball every play, which stops the clock. <laughs> Thank you. And we're back at door field, 29 for Fitch, 29 points they've scored already. Stonington yet to score, Falcons gonna kick off. And I gotta tell you something, we, we've talked about the Maddoxes and the Halls and, and the, the, the the other one there, the Dante the Inferno. Yeah. How about Eric Wilson and Pat Hansen and Eric Herman and Andrew Bergman and Dan Carey? Murph, they're doing the job in the trench. Yeah, they're doing an excellent job in the trench. They're blowing the people off the ball. They're creating a line of scrimmage five yards past the point of the ball. Ball kicks off. Gets ready. Cook, excuse me, kicking off again. Cook bounces along the ground. And we picked up my 83. And 83 for them. 88, Mike. 88 is Jimmy, Jimmy Nicholas. Nicholas. Yeah. But Cook has not been kicking last couple weeks, Murphy. He was kicking really well deep down the field. He hasn't really been kicking that well today. Well, it could be his mechanics, could be anything. He's not really a kicker, you know. Yeah. Plus, he's put in a lot of mileage. His legs could be a little bit heavy. Concentration could be a little off. You never really know. And the way DeVoe is kicking some of these extra points, they're, they're really screaming out there, Mike. I remember Tristan White was the kickoff man last year. That's right. Well, you don't want your quarterback on the field kicking off, going down into the teeth of uh, That's right. a kickoff return team either. Let's see what the Bears can do. Trailing 29-0. They have it on their own 36. They've moved the ball from the shotgun. Trip Double receivers to the right. Lucy moves, looks, pass out intended for Smith. Kyle Smith, the sophomore, breaks one tackle, but he's going to be, as he steps back, he probably didn't lose the first down. Going to be second and one. He was wide open because in McCraw's backpedal, he slipped and fell when he saw Melo stop, stop to uh, plant the pass. And I got to tell you, on that pass was George Hall leveled again, Mello. And number 32 for the Stonington Bears, John Lucy and Hall, exchanged some words right there. I think Lucy said, please don't hit my quarterback so hard anymore. He's going to be hurt because I tell you what, Hall is saying hi on every time that Mello goes back to pass. And if he throws the ball more than 10 to 15 yards, Murph, he's being hammered on every throw. Well, on any deep pattern that he throws, he definitely does not have time to throw. But he's got a personal protector back there. And what I'm really waiting for is for Lucy to slip out of the backfield and him throw underneath to him. Yeah, either that or Johnny Baker get up to tight end because Johnny Baker, even though he plays tight end, is one of the fastest guys on this team. If they send him right down the middle, that could be a surprise play. It's going to have to be a surprise play because after the brilliant first drive by Stonington, which came up short, Fitch has kind of figured this out. 
seems they have. We have an injured Falcon on the field. I can't see who it is. Do we know who that injured player is? Not right now because the. Miles, who is that? We're not able to tell who the injured player, but he's moving around. He's all right. They're looking at his leg. We'll let you know who it is right away. But we talked about earlier, Stonington was going to throw the ball, and they had to throw the ball against the Falcons to be in the game. And that's exactly what they did. They came out in the shotgun. They haven't ran the ball yet except for quarterback George Murr. And we knew that that was going to happen. The injured player for the Fitch Falcons, Mike Stan, Stan Madian. Better you than me say that one. Estimation. Thank you, Murr. Estimation. And he's okay. He's walking off. He's got a little bit of a sore leg, but if you're his parents or your grandparents, don't worry about a thing. He's looking just fine. He's walking off the field. A little limp. I got a feeling he'll be back in the game before long. Here come the Bears. They take over. 428 left to play first half. 29 for the Falcons. Zero for the Bears. Second and one on the 45 of the Bears. Stimation has a two-point conversion. We'll figure that up for next week. How many scored? How many touchdowns? Triple receivers to the left. Mello's going to throw, I mean, to the right. Mello puts it out, and boy, they nailed him. And I must have been Johnny Baker, no, the tight end. DJ, oh, you're, you're, the, you're hit. You're a sophomore, Mike. Your favorite sophomore. He's up for sophomore here, DJ Coleman. He's all over the field, Murph. And I got to say, I do not like the spot that the referees gave that pass. He caught that ball behind that line, yep. behind the 45-yard uh, the line, <clears throat> closer to the 44. And they're giving him about the 45 and a half. Well, you wouldn't have liked the spot Stonington got last week. They threw two passes. They started on their 38 in the London. Two incomplete passes moved the ball back to the 40. <laughs> Spots leave a little bit to be desired, but it is a foggy night out here. Third down and one. Mellow's behind the center. Look for quarterback Snake. See what they do. Mello breaks it off. He's going to get the thing, but Milton nails him. Mello gets the first down. He skipped and ran off one of the guards. Got the first down. Yeah, what he did, he ran that little delay. He waited for his blocker to make his move before he slipped in behind him. And it's the way he should run it. Subs are already in for the Falcons, guys, as we see on that tackle right there. 44, Rob Taylor's in on the play. And your buddy John Capone's in there, man. Oh, the hit man. You know something? He's in one play, Phil. He's dirty already. <laughs> yeah, but he's played special teams all night. First down on your own 48-yard line. Mello back in the shotgun. Double receivers to the right. France has done an excellent job on his snap. Mello's going to put the ball off there. He's looking for Jensen. Jensen stretches out, and it looks like it's going to be incomplete. incomplete. But I'll tell you what, Jensen stretches out for the ball. Dante Ross is down. He did an excellent job of coverage. He might have caught the ball, Murph. Dante Ross. He Dante. did. With an interception. Incredible, spectacular circus catch for Dante Ross. He's hurt, though. He's laying on the field. It looks like he's got the wind knocked down the way his knees are swaying back and forth. Is that what that's an indication of? Usually. He probably knocked the wind out of himself with the interception. And look at the sportsmanship by number one, Blake Jensen. Goes right over, checks him out, and hits him on the head saying, good job. That's good sportsmanship that's right there, Blake Jensen. Two great catches by Ross, one on offense, one on defense. I never for the world thought he intercepted it. I, for a second, I, I thought that he might have because he was out there behind the ball, but I thought it was out of bounds. Yeah, I did too, but when I saw the ref marking it and I saw Jensen unhappy without the ball, I said, that's an interception. <laughs> but I got to tell you, that's very good sportsmanship. Credit goes out to Blake Jensen going over there. You know, Murphy, you don't see that enough going over there and when a guy's hurt, tapping him on the shoulders and just uh, saying, I hope you're okay. No, you don't. That is very good sportsmanship on their part. And they hadn't, Blake, if You've lived on the moon and don't know. His brother Alex scored over. We did the game where he scored his 2,000th point against Fitch. What a great kid he is. Going to Lehigh, full scholarship to the engineer. But, that's right, Mike. That Lehigh. We wish him nothing but good luck because the way he shoots them trees, Mike, we might see him playing at another level after playing college Division One basketball. Well, we're going to have to see him play because I know they play Holy Cross this year. Oh, we'll see so that So we'll game. take a ride up to we Worcester. Certainly will. Take a look at Alex. Alex played quarterback for the uh, BS as a freshman, and he separated his shoulder, and he said, wait a minute, I think I'll stick to this basketball stuff. I do not like how long Dante Ross is down. It... He's up, Murph. He's walking. He's all right. 
Yeah, he's jogging off on his own power. And you're right when you said, and you're the one to tell me, when you see those knees go side to side like that, he got his win. But what he did was he intercepted the ball, Murphy, and it looked like he might have came down on top of the ball. Yeah, it, it hits you in the solar plexus, and it causes a lot of pain. It just knocks the wind right out of you momentarily. I've had it happen to me a few times. And that's what happened, but he's okay. He's walking off. Falcons will take over on the interception by Dante Ross with the ball on about, Mike, it looks like the 15-yard line of their own 15-yard line. So they got 85 yards to go for a touchdown, but they got time in their favor. 249 left to play first half. They lead 29 to 0. They went 77 and two yards. They just went 80 left, you know, with the, let's see what they do from the 15. Hand off inside. George Hall. George Hall's going to get maybe a yard. No, he's going to get two yards. Shortest run of the day for Hall. I really like the way Will DeVoe has tightened up his footwork. He's got it down now. He's ready to roll. And it seems to be, Murph, that, you know, Mike's having problems finding who's got the ball. Will DeVoe's getting too good. Is I think it caught her out because of the way they do it. He hides that ball very, well. But let's very, see what we can well. do looking in the fog here. See what happens here as we're watching it on TV. It's what I do home, watch all these games anyhow, so probably can do it. Devoted quarterback. He's got Maddox in motion. There's that handoff to Maddox. Maddox, a tight handoff. He's going to get up close to the first down. It's going to be third down, maybe one. But whenever they run that guy close to the quarterback, he's going to get the ball. So he, Yeah, that was uh, his favorite play last year, John McCoy. <coughs> Yeah. He gained many, many yards that way and scored about 30 touchdowns. And just beat the guy to the corner. Beat that defensive end around that corner. You got five, six yards. First anymore. down. First down on that. Clock running. Minute 55 left to play. First half, 29 for Fitch. Zero for Stonington. If you just joined us, Stonington came out, moved the ball 40 yards their first possession, then turned it over on downs, and it's been all Fitch since then. First down on the 26 for the Falcons. See what they do. DeVoe keeps it, going to roll out to the right, puts it out. It's intended for Tamar Shelton. Tamar Shelton. Yep. All six foot five, and he extended on. Cook's telling them how to catch him. Seems to go right up there. <laughs> Cook tapped him on the head. Shelton was extended completely, almost came up with a beautiful catch. A nice pass by Will DeVoe. Threw it with only one person could catch it anyway, Murph. Yeah, it was on the money. I think uh, Tamar's contact with the ground caused him not to catch that ball. And they had an ineligible receiver downfield also. So they're going to cost him. That's going to be the down two, I think. This has happened a few times this year to Fitch already. And Fitch, the offensive line are so aggressive. That they can get down there because they, they're blocking the guy and they just keep going. And with DeVoe a lot, you don't know if he's going to run it or pass it or what he's going to do. So they lose back to the 20-yard line. It's going to be second down about 16. First down, excuse me, they don't lose it down in high school. My mistake. Maddox gets the ball, gets around the corner. Maddox is going to get up to about the 28. He gets maybe seven or eight. It's going to be second down in about 12. I'll tell you, Phil, Maddox just has amazed me because I think really he was overshadowed by Michael Hall. And with Michael Hall not, not Maddox can't be overshadowed if he's a great player, but I mean offensively. I, I just think he's so efficient in what he does. <laughs> yeah. Seven. He moves forward on offense and he knocks you backward on defense. It's just a very fluid, he, he's a football player. He can play any position, do anything you need him to do. And you know, and he could play. I think if Fitch ran to Veer, Maddox would run to Veer. He'd be great Veer quarterback, but again, you've got a great offense with a great quarterback here. But, I mean, he could go and play so many spots. He could be a wide receiver. He could be a defensive back, safety. Uh, he could do all kinds of things. Kick returner, you name it. He's got so many things that he can do on, on the field that he's just a very talented athlete. And oh, it yeah. just seems he's so gifted. The great ones are always fluid. They, once you see a fluid guy, then you know they're going to be great. He could definitely play any skill position on the field, as well as quarterback or safety, free or strong. Yeah. Because he'll hit a tight end, he'll cover the field. I would think, and I have no expertise in the matter, but I would, if I was put him somewhere, I'd put him at free safety and say, just follow the ball all over the field. Come up, make the tackles, go out and double team where you got it. Figure out what they're going to call, be where the ball is. They had a timeout, 29 nothing, 101 to go. Second down and about 12. 
Falcons with the ball, with the lead, 29 and nothing. Maddox in motion. DeVoe keeps it. DeVoe's going to put it out. He's looking for Shelton. Shelton went up. And I'll tell you what, Shelton had his hands on the ball, but he had a lot of help because on that play there, Jensen was defending somebody. And Jensen went up with Shelton. Yeah, he was. Jensen made an excellent play on that pass. The ball was well thrown. It was the same pattern that he ran before. He knew that Tavar Shelton would be open, but Blake Jensen closed the gap, got his hand in there, and broke up that pass. And I think Emery thought it was fourth down, too, because they lost it down because he sent his punt team on, and they're calling him back because it's only third down. And Em never makes a mistake. Emery, ne he mathematics, he said, a mathematics teacher, probably the head of the department, he never makes a mathematical mistake. But we caught him. We caught him on Comcast right here. So third down, which about seven. Under a minute to go, first half, 29 for the Falcons, and we got a delay game here because they had so many people running on and off the field. That'll push them further back. Okay, so now they're going to be third down at about 12. And that only means you're probably going to throw to Shelton or Cook or somebody. Maybe they could throw to George Hall running straight up the middle of the field. What a play that would be. No, George would look to knock people down and forget about the he ball. He wouldn't catch the ball, go over his head, but he knocked three people down, so let's see. <coughs> George is a great kid, great student. We just tease the ones we really like. That's what it is. I don't want anybody to think we have anything against George here. Maddox in motion, DeVoe with it, rolls right, throws it back to Maddox, and I'll tell you what, what a play by Lucy. He almost picked that one and went in the end zone. Great play. He slipped off that screen and just shut it down. Lucy's a good player. Lucy's a hard-nosed player. Is this going to be the second punt of the year for Fitch? Could or the be. first? Right. We have not seen him punt this year. Norris punted once against Manchester, so it's the second. And I think they punted the first game against St. Bernard's. They went three and out. We didn't see that game. Okay. But this, Norris has not got as lucky yet as a punter. I'll tell you that much. Norris Tony is a bad punter. Did. I watched him pregame. Yeah. He had a couple of 50 yarders. He was the extra point man when he was a freshman. He's a junior now. White shoes, as Ronnie calls him. High snap. Gets a nice high kick. And Mello's not going to run that one back, especially when he sees Milton looking him in the eye and Maddox. Ball's going to bounce. It's going to go down on about the 44-yard line. But I'll tell you, Ryan Milton was flying down there. Yeah, he was. And that was an excellent kick by White Shoes. Coach Bunicor, a senior, always used to have one guy who could cover kicks. He'd have a tight end come flying out of there, and as the ball was coming down, he'd be right there with you. And then... Emery seems to do a lot of coverage like that, too. It works best when you release him from the middle and not from the outside. Okay. Yeah, because there's all that commotion and stuff on the outside. You probably go right down the middle. Got a lot of subs in there. Well, not Norris is a sub, but Norris is in there. Number we have it. 44, I think that's Harris or Taylor. We'll pick it up for you in one yeah, second. Yeah, it's Rob Taylor. Rob Taylor, okay. From the 44-yard line, Stonington remains in the shotgun. Mello remains the quarterback. In motion is Jensen. So it's three receivers on the left. Mello looks, throws it, tended for... That one was intended for McClellan. And I'll tell you, that one was high. Most of his passes, as Ronnie alluded to, have been high lately. He tried to be very fine with that. Tried to thread that needle there. It's tough to do. Because Tony has some good receivers. Smith, sophomore number three, Baker, the tight end, Blake Jensen. But they're having a hard job getting open in the time that Mello was allowed to throw the ball. No doubt about it. Second down from the 44, 38 seconds to go, 29 for the Falcons, zero for the Bears. Mello in the shotgun, double receivers to the left. Lucy's the hottest working guy they got. He's on every play. He's blocking. Here's Mello with that draw. Mello's going to get past midfield, get out of bounds. Nice run by Mello. And once again, Lucy took off the block, so you know that that's where Mello was going. Yep. And you, you got to be able to read those keys to stop the play. And Mello is a highly skilled. He gets two about midfield. It's going to be third down, maybe three. But Mello pulls that ball down pretty good and runs. Yeah, he does. He doesn't look like he's a fast kid, but he's got some speed. We know he's tough because he's been hit all day today. He's a tough kid. He looks a little bit like Joe Namath, the way his shoulders kind of yeah. hunch forward, doesn't he? Well, if he can play a little bit like him, he'll be all set, I'll tell you that much. He'll have a fur coat to hold deal. There's the first bad snap over Mello's head. Being chased by George Hall, and there they are. They meet. George Hall right there with him, and that's the first. And Tremar Shelton, the bookend junior tight ends. That should be the end of the first half there, really, just about. If it ain't, it ought to be. Because that's lost the first about 30, 20 yards on that play, Mike, 5, 10, 15. And I think yeah. Coach Bunicor Jr. is going to let it run off. But I'll tell you what, that's the first bad snap Francis has made. 
That's true. And this is his first week at center. Yep. He's played well. It's going to be fourth down. And a whole lot. It's, and I think Fitch called a timeout. I can't believe Stonington would. No, Fitch called it, Mike. They want to get that ball back. 19 seconds left. I was up with Coach Ken Woods. He says, we're gonna, we should block this one. He's got to play on to try to block this uh, kick right here. I think that's why Kenny's going down on the field, because he's going to block it. <laughs> yeah. He probably could. Kenny could block him. Oh. See, the problem with him is they made him wear his helmet right. If he could have put his helmet on backwards, he'd have been All-American. <laughs> he was a good player as he was. But if he could have put his helmet on backwards, he'd have been unstoppable. Why is that? I don't know. He just wears everything backwards. <laughs> they made him wear his helmet straight. But he was a good player. <coughs> Played for the Southeast Connecticut Sea Raiders. We yeah. played about. He was defensive coach and you name it. Tough guy. He knows his stuff. No doubt about it. Yes, he does. You make him turn the hat around. Always like Hercules. That means like Sampson. That is good. See if they get it. They're going to try to. Mello gets the snap. Maddox goes in. Just missed getting it. Wow. So Ross is going to have it on about the 36. Ross gets by one tackle. Ross gets by another tackle. Ross gets by another tackle. Ross gets knocked out of bounds on about the 35-yard line. And there's still five seconds left. So I think he kicked it so well, he outkicked the coverage. Oh, there was no coverage. They went all out to block that kick. And Dante Ross did it all by himself. That was a heck of a return. I see a piece of linen on the paper on the ground there. Some, some referee's dirty laundry. You're going to have a clip called against Fitch. So that'll negate that fine run by Dante the Inferno Rock. Yeah, the baby bull got back there and decided to act like he was in the china shop. Yes, he did. And there's a lot of broken china when he does that. That's going to go back uh, 15 yards from there. Going to go back from the 48 to about the 33-yard line, maybe 37-yard line. What do you think? The vote goes for the end zone? Nah, I think, uh, I think they'll give it to... What do we know? I never called a play in my life, but I would say give it to George uh, Hall. He might take it to the end zone, but I don't think they'll pass it. All right, 36-yard line of 29 to nothing, 36-yard line of the Falcons. Last play of the first half. DeVoe, long count. Hands off to Maddox on it inside reverse. Maddox going to have the first down. Maddox going to have more. Maddox keeps going. Maddox is deep in the Stonington territory. Just knocked down 40. Maddox got to have 100 yards in the first half. That was my favorite play, Mike. That one right there. Not the, the shovel answer. pass. The shovel. It is getting a little foggy out yes, there. Yes, it is. I think we got, got a little cramping on, on the half, half of Brandon Cook. Well, he's been all over the field. Even on his kickoffs, Brandon Cook, Phil has been the first player on the, end of the, the other end of the field. So uh, Brandon Cook's playing a super game, as all the Falcons have. And Stonington, you know, they're down 29 to nothing, but I'll tell you something, Mike. They got a lot of heart in that team. They came out. They're doing the best they can do. And like uh, Jim Bunicor said earlier, we're not dodging anybody. We're here to play. We're going to have play. We want to be the best. We're going to play the best. And they are playing the best tonight, believe me. But the thing that amazes me the most about Fitch is in that tight double wing tee, what they do in that little space. They have guys cut in, cut out. guys. I mean, it's not much room there for them to do it. And the shovel pass and everything along that line. It's precision football is what it is. It There's a, a lot of footwork, a lot of practice, a lot of repetition. There's a wild rumor that on one play just before the half that will count, they're going to show throw Roddy the shovel pass. Put him out there with a the uniform. I think they ought to do that. I yes. think they ought to do that. Don't you think so? Huh? It's Mike Devine, you got a great crew right here. Put Mike Devine on the radio. Sure. Come on, get on top of here. Let me give you some volume. Murph, Mike, gotta let my best, buddy Mike do best it. move that Fitch High School ever did was when I got Mike Devine from Killingly. But you don't do just football. You, the, the band's in the form. You're doing the soccer. You, you do everything on the, on the filming end. Well, we try to do a total package here, Ryan. Yeah, well, you Cover do. everything. Now, what do you do? Now, you get the film back Monday, and you go <coughs> to work. It takes a lot of time. You and you get a lot of students, and you, and you splice it up. And how do you do it all? Well, the first block in the morning, we get the, t the tape from the coach, uh, Emery. And, uh, of course, the football players are all anxious to see the film uh, first run. Uh, but then we start to review the film. We, we have to, you know, edit out all the uh, the breaks from the radio station. And, you know, we have to condense the thing so it's streamlined. Uh, also screen it for appropriateness, if you know what I mean. And uh, so it, it's... Have we ever been inappropriate? No, but some of the coaches are a little... Uh, oh, okay. <laughs>
some of the coaches. Well, any event, Mike Devine with Comcast WSUB is happy to have the affiliation, and I hope we continue this for many years because it's a lot of fun watching those games all week. A lot of kids like the, uh, they like some of the stuff uh, Mike and Murph had to say, right? Oh, very much so. The kids are uh, always asking, you know, when are we going to get started with uh, WSUB ESPN? And uh, I'll tell you, the, you know, personally, I'm, I'm very impressed with uh, the talent that you've uh, mustered here uh, in the press box. Uh, you know, Phil is like, uh, he's like, he has a really a, a philosophical and a scientific uh, outlook. That's why they call him Phil. It's That's really, right. his first name is Philosophical. And, and <laughs> Mike, you know, the, the amount of knowledge that you've acquired and put together on the history of this region and the sporting events, you've got to be 100 years old. That's right. It's only because I'm old. Me and Methuselah are the same. <laughs> Mike is unbelievable with his knowledge of this football. But I can't see He's the knowledge of football throughout the whole state. He amazed me the first time I met him. Yes, it was. It was a wonderful conversation because he's the only person who knew the people I was talking about. I Nobody know. else ever knew him. Well, you, I recognize a couple names. I've been around this region for quite a while. Yeah. So. Ronnie and I both went to Fitch. You know that. You went to Fitch? Oh, yeah. We didn't know that. That's right. I was all what state year? swimmer. Oh, back in the uh, late 60s. All state swimmer? Yeah. So Ronnie always hangs around with all state guys. Kevin McMahon, Mike Devine, Phil Murphy. I don't know how you Nothing got me. Nothing but the best. Yeah, yeah, I got me. Hey, see, when it comes to play-by-play, -play, Mike, you're all American. How's that? <laughs> okay, good so. enough. But Mike Devine, thanks for coming by. We appreciate uh, everything you do and the work and the what are you doing? And I'll tell you something. I think Murphy's better than Dennis Miller. Oh, well, I'd have to say that uh, Dennis Miller has proven to be an embarrassment, in my opinion. But uh, Murph is a total pro. Uh, he knows what he's talking about. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think with his perspective, he should be over at the Newport War College, his type of perspective. He, he's a sharp well, guy. Tyler Walwell's getting married in Newport. His brother is getting married. What do you got? You're a former player. What do you think about Dennis Miller as a former player? I'm not going to ask you personally, but what do you think the players think about him, the former guys? And if you want to call me later on, you feel free to do that. You know, I get all of his obscure references. Because well, so. you know who they are. <laughs> but now most of the players, with all due respect to them, have talent, are not as smart as you are. Well, let's not go there. But let me say this. <laughs> Dennis Miller... This is entertainment, and, and the, the way that football works these days is for pure entertainment's sake, and, and that's what it is. They're trying to bring some people back to Monday Night Football. They've had a tremendous drop-off in, in their viewership, and uh, they're looking, what they really need is someone who gr goes against the grain, a lot like Howard Cosell. Yeah, well, Howard Cosell, but he was the first. I don't think anybody will ever do it. I mean, he could walk that fine line between negativity Okay, and criticizing someone because